Hi everyone, David here. I just got myself a new game, The Russian Campaign by GMT Games. This just arrived yesterday. I've been trying to get together to do a uh, little unboxing video, something a little bit different for me. So here it is. I got myself a tripod. I got myself the game. I have my model, my Panzer 38T in progress behind me. But let's open this up. And I'll talk as I go through it, as I crack the plastic. So as you recall, the Russian campaign was first designed by John Edwards and released in 1974 in Australia. And uh, I think it was in response to a game called Stalingrad, which covered the war in the East. 1974, so we're talking 30 years after the end of the war. Uh, in comparison, it's 2023. It'd be like trying to do the Battle of Mogadishu right now. That's how close it was and how proximate. <clears throat> All right. So I open it up. The, the cover art is by Roger McGowan. It says here by J.R. Edwards. And I believe, I'm going to find out when I open this, I believe that uh, this is a throwback to the original version. Released in 74, Avalon Hill picked it up in 77 or so, maybe 78. And I think this was Roger McGowan's first uh, first commissioned artwork. It's a great job. Um, and it's gone through some... Uh, the thing about this game is it's quite simple in terms of its rules. It's not very extensive, but it's so playable. Uh, there's more literature on this game. It's, it's, like, it's like chess in a certain way. Like There's not a lot of in-depth rules, but... Uh, the literature's just gone crazy. So I think what they've done, and they, there are some other games that came out in between. But anyway, this is the one now. Let's see what they got. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the rules. I think there's a number of variants, <clears throat> a lot of examples. I'm looking at the, uh, the pages here. They seem to be brightly colored. It's got some charts in there that explain what's going on. I'll get into that. But uh, it's, uh, oh, the smell it smells so good. 30, 30, well, 35 pages overall. <clears throat> Developer notes at the end and so on. Some good photos and stuff like that in there. So I think it's pretty cool. I'll put the stuff in here as I take it out. The counter sheets. Oh, those are nice big counters. Oh. Counter sheet one of three, it says here. You can see these have the, uh, uh, the NATO symbols on these, but they also have the tank silhouettes here. I think there's a... Yeah, so here's the third core. And that's the third core as well. So they both uh, have both styles for however you want to use them. Oh yeah, there's the Austrian uh, failed artist. I'll just cover his face up. I don't want any uh, battle or uh, algorithms taking me out. Now you notice the silhouettes. The one problem with the silhouettes is that you could get a tank that could be anachronistic from the time it comes in. For example, it looks like a Panzer III, Panzer IV, probably an H model. Uh, we have some half tracks. We have the German well, DAK. That's the Africa Corps. Panthers. We have some Tigers. I mean, that's cool and all, but I'm I'm old school. I kind of like the NATO symbols. That's just me. Get up here. More counters. <clears throat> They're really big and they feel great. And I think these are going to punch out really well. Oh, I'm not sure what all these are. There's uh, the uh, victory points thing. There's some SS units, and I there's the failed artist again. I'll cover him up. Uh, railroad. There's the odds levels they can place down. How many victory points you have. Notes of sudden death. I remember that from uh, the original game. A sudden death victory. An automatic victory, I think they called it. Maybe I'm confusing sudden death with automatic. That doesn't matter. So the maps, I did not get the mounted maps, I don't think. Anyway, no, I just got the sheets. It's fine. I'm not going to open them all up. Oh, <clears throat> I see here. It does have the tables on there, just like it did on the original. I think that's the Black Sea down there. Yeah, there's Bucharest. Ah, get it upside down. Okay, so you can see there's the Black Sea. There's the Sea of Azov, Rostov. Dnipro, Petrovsk. I think it's called Dnipro today. There's Kiev, capital of the Ukrainian SSR. Unfortunately, it's in the news today for other reasons. That's fine. There's Berlin, Posen. I guess that's uh, occupied Poland, if I recall right. 
Oh, they got some other, they've named some of the lakes. Up here by Archangel, there's Lake Onega, I guess it is, the White Sea. Cool. Oh, look, charts and stuff. Combat results table. So we got it separate there. The weather table, because these used to be on the map, if I'm not mistaken. There's the weather chart. Also, I remember in the original game, you could do the uh, historical weather if you wanted to. And there is a, a rule, I remember, you could do the rule where first phase it was one weather, it could be a second phase and the other. And there's the order of battle. That's what I really liked about this game. Is you could lay out the entire order of battle at the beginning. And you knew exactly what was coming on when, where to set up, where to place the uh, Austrian artist. <coughs> Failed artist. If you'll excuse me. And, yeah, the same with the Soviets. They say Russians, but whatever. And uh, I guess you got the failed seminarian up here, if you want to go with that. Oh, oh what's this? Oh, there's uh, a couple more charts and stuff like that. Like, uh, Oh, okay, for the different scenarios. This is Fall Blau. That would be the summer of 1942, Case Blue. Citadella. That's in uh, March, or sorry, 1943. It's the big one, Begration, 1944. In other words, payback, I guess you could say. More movement allowance charts, combat results tables. These are really robust. These are really thick. Really good. All right. What do we got here? Oh, well, we got, I think it said there were two dice. Not sure what this is. I have no idea. It's probably like an overlay. I'm thinking like almost like a, um, an ASL. And there's like spacers here. And I think the spacers are for people who got the mounted maps. I didn't get the mounted maps. But it's, uh, it's actually kind of neat. This is really well packaged. I like the way it uh, the way it fits in there. I do. I really do. I thought there were two six-sided dice. Ah, I got ripped off. Just kidding. Anyway, that is the Russian campaign. I'm looking forward to playing this. I'm going to play it sometime. Last time I played it was, holy crow, who did I play? I think I played my friend Gary, and I lost. Like, he, he was German, and he took Moscow, like, in September 1941. It was, uh, anyway. So that's it. The Russian campaign. More compact than the original, but um, I think it's probably well worth it. So if it's still available from GMT Games, pick it up. Does say copyright 2021 released two years later, but whatever. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, as uh, as I always like to say, take care. Bye for now.